Hey, what's up everybody welcome back moving on to another question more limits to solve we got to evaluate these two limits here so starting off with this first one limit as h approaches zero of one over x plus h minus one over x all over h this one is pretty tricky pretty unique whenever you see something like this and you got these fractions here almost always you're gonna have to make them into one fraction so we got to take these two fractions in the numerator try to subtract them, make them into one fraction. And in order to subtract two fractions, they have to have what? A common denominator. And a common denominator between x and x plus h is just x times x plus h. So what do we have to multiply this one by? We have to multiply it by x, meaning that we have to multiply the top by x. And then this one here, we have to multiply by x plus h, meaning we have to multiply the top by x plus h as well. So let's rewrite that now. We'll have x minus, in brackets, x plus h. Be careful with that too. You're subtracting that whole term when there's this subtraction here. So remember to keep that x plus h in brackets. And that's going to be all over that common denominator of x, x plus h. And then that's still going to be all over h. So we just took these two fractions, made them into one fraction. And then notice that we can simplify that numerator here. If we distribute that negative inside the bracket, we'll have x minus x, which just nets out to 0 then we'll be left with negative h up top. Then we'll have x times x plus h, and it's gonna be all over this h value here. So we can take this h value, put it over one, and it's like we're taking a fraction, dividing it by another fraction, which is the same as taking the fraction in the numerator, so negative h over x, x plus h, and multiplying it by the reciprocal of that second fraction, right? A fraction divided by the second fraction is like the first fraction times the reciprocal of the second fraction. So we'd be multiplying by the reciprocal of h over one, which is just one over h. And now notice, h is cancel out, and we're left with the limit as h goes to 0, negative 1 times negative 1 is, or negative 1 times positive 1 is just negative 1, and we're just left with x, x plus h in the denominator. And now notice how we can plug in a h value of 0, and our denominator won't be 0, won't be undefined. So if we plug in 0 for h here, we'll just be left with x, x times x is just uh, x squared. So our final answer is negative 1 over x squared. That is the limit for the original. So again, whenever you see something like that, make the numerator into one fraction, and then you should get to the point where the h's will cancel out, and you end up with some sort of expression. And then finally, the second limit, limit as x approaches 0 of x plus 216 to the power 1 over 3 minus x all over x. Direct substitution, can we do it? Plugging in zero for x, we can't because the denominator is gonna be zero. Now, since we have this fraction one over three, we know that we're going to most likely have to do a change of variable. And if you didn't go over the change of variable strategy in the lecture videos, I go through tons of examples there. Make sure you go over that before doing this question. So we let u equal that whole expression x plus 216 to the power 1 over 3. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take both sides to the power of 3 because we have to try to isolate for that x. So we'll have u to the power of 3 equals x plus 216. Bring the 216 over. We got u cubed minus 216 equals x. So now we have something to sub in for the x. And we also have something to sub in for that expression, which we made u. Let's actually rewrite it, or let's, um, let's rewrite it down here. So we got u equals 
x plus 216 to the power of 1 over 3. So we got a substitution here, here, so the x's are gone in the expression. However, notice that there's still an x here as x approaches 0, and we need everything to be changed. However, when x approaches 0, notice that if we plug in 0 for x here, we'll have 216 to the power of 1 over 3, which gives us 6. So x approaching 0 is the same as u approaching 6. So we can now make a substitution for that x approaching 0 as well. So we can rewrite all of this as the limit as u approaches 6. x plus 216 to the power of 1 over 3 is just u minus 6 all over u to the power of 3 minus 216, right? This expression for x. And notice we can't make a direct substitution yet, but already this is looking a lot nicer. There's no radicals or ugly radicals to deal with or rational exponents. And that u to the power of 3 minus 216, that is a difference of cubes. So that factors into u minus 6, u squared plus um, 6 times u, 6u plus 36. Right? If you remember, difference of cubes is equal to a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. And now notice that the u minus 6s cancel out. And now we can make a direct substitution of u equaling 6. And when we do that, we'd have 1 in the numerator. 6 squared plus 6 times 6 plus 36. All of these are 36, so it's like 36 times 3, which is just 108. And that is your final answer. 1 over 108 is the answer to this limit. So you've got to do a change of variable change everything to be in terms of u, got a difference of cubes, u minus 6 is cancel out, then plug in a u value of 6, you get 1 over 108.